sit on enough height that your hips are the same level as your knees. And then just come to your less habitual cross of your legs. Take off any glasses. And just take the backs of your thighs and spread them outwards and pull the buttocks flesh back so that there's a, a deepening of the inner groin downwards. The outer thighs move back, the buttocks flesh moves back. Balance your body weight evenly on your two sitting bones and begin to have a sense of your thighs descending. That's it. Place your hands right on your thighs and start to grow taller from your outer hips all the way up to your armpits. So your, your rib cage lifts like a cylinder. It doesn't push forward. It doesn't drop backwards. It just lifts like a beautiful cylinder upwards. And even for a moment, allow your shoulders to come up to get more length on the sides of your trunk and then bring your outer shoulders back and flow your back upper neck muscles down. Lift up through the sides of your neck so that all of this lifts upwards, also like a cylinder, and the crown of your head is lifting, and the crown of your head is right over your pelvic floor. And then close your eyes, and just settle down from your morning so far. Seize this time, claim this time in your day, in your morning, to practice yoga, Atta Yoga Nushasana, the practice of yoga begins now. Now bring your hands to your heart center in a prayer position. And lift the breastbone up, the sternum bone goes up. Keep this, the top of the sternum slightly forward so that there's no sense of leaning backwards. Keep the sternum bone going up. If you learn to lift from behind the sternum bone, you'll find more of that, that lifting upwards without leaning your upper body backwards. Bring your outer shoulders back and move the inner edges of your shoulder blades in to your back body. Yoga is about connection. So as we go through these different areas of the body, we're connecting them to other parts of the body, which helps create extension in the spine, opening in the chest, and then into that opening, start to receive your senses of perception inwards. Draw your eyes back, settle them and soften them back. Draw your ears inwards, find space inside your ears. Relax your jaw downwards, your tongue downwards. Soften and smooth out and spread the skin of your face. Keep relaxing across the top of the shoulders, the back upper neck muscles. And then connect your mind to your breath, connect your body to your breath. Let yourself be still, let yourself be quiet. And please join me for three ohms. chest upwards and bow your head downwards. We practice yoga to take care of ourselves. We practice yoga to realize on a deeper level who we are. We practice yoga to find peace. 
Release your hands down to your thighs with your palms upwards. Raise your head and slowly open your eyes. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to class. Welcome to practice. Thank you for coming. So stretch out your legs. Press the fronts of your thighs into the backs of your thighs. We're gonna to start today in a restorative pose. We're not gonna do all restorative poses, uh, but we are gonna do some at the beginning and the end. So have a bolster if you have a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, um, you can have some folded blankets in a rectangle shape. You know, folded blankets, one or two blankets, and then have something else for your head. And have a couple of blocks around you as well. And if you have a belt, have a belt. So you'll have this a one blanket or a pillow for your head. So I'm just making this shoulder stand size blanket into a accordion shape. If you know the pose, Supta Bada Konasana with the belt, classic pose with a vertical um, bolster, go ahead into it. Those of you who don't, I'm gonna talk you through it, okay? So I have the bolster for my spine or the folded blankets, okay? And then, and if you don't have anything, you can do it on your back, that's fine. And then I make a loop in my belt and I start with the loop pretty big. Okay, and then I'll just show you from the front how the belt looks. So I bring the belt over my body and I bring it all the way back to the, right to the top of the buttocks there, here. So right where the two buttocks come together, that's where the belt goes in the back. And then from the front, I bring the belt in between my thighs and around the bottoms of my feet. And then I pull on the tail of the belt to make the belt taut. Okay, and then it really depends on, you know, Marsha, be careful with your knees. If this bothers your knees, don't make the belt so taut. Now, if you don't have a belt, you can also do this without the belt. Okay, so once you have your belt taut, then you sit in front of your bolster, at least a fist distance in front of the bolster, maybe more. And then you have blocks or you have pillows or blankets outside your knees, outside your thighs. And then you lengthen the buttocks flesh and you start to go back over the bolster and you bring the blanket under your head. And then of course you take off glasses, if like me you wear the glasses and you lengthen the buttocks flesh towards the uh, feet. So there's a lengthening of the lumbar spine. Make sure the blocks are supporting you. Some of you will have them at, you know, the medium level. Some of you can have them at the lower level. It really depends on you. Remember, this pose is not about your deepest stretch. You know, it's about working with your nervous system. So finding some balance in your nervous system. So once you have this, you have your setup. Raise your arms upwards alongside your ears so that you can maximize the length from your hips all the way to your fingers. So the sides of your body lengthen to your arms and then the arms lengthen beyond your fingertips. But as you do that, keep moving the back upper neck muscles down. Keep the back upper neck muscles down and just extend the sides of your trunk. Keep the back of the neck long, make sure that your head isn't being thrown back. Now keep, maintain the sides of your body long, make sure that your palms are facing each other as if you had a, a yoga block that you were holding in between your hands. And then inhale, and then as you exhale, just bring you, keep that length on the sides of your trunk, but bring your arms alongside your body with your palms upwards. And then just relax into the pose. So this is the Supta Baha Konasana. Supta means reclining. Bada means bound. Kona means angle. So it's the reclining bound angle pose.
So like I said, you can also do it flat on your back if you don't have a bolster. You can do it without the belt if you don't have a belt. Um, it's good to have some support outside the knees. That can be anything you have around, like pillows or blankets, anything like that. So allow, as you press your feet gently into each other, allow the inner thighs to spread and allow the outer thighs to release into whatever you have outside your knees or outside your thighs. So there's a sense of your legs opening. Make sure to take as much support as you need Leela for the hips, right? Don't, don't be in a big, Big pose, just let your hips recover from any stress. And especially let your abdomen become super soft. So a lot of times our abdomen gets pushed forward and our internal organs get pushed forward. So in our yoga practice, we're, we're uh, um, learning to allow the, the back of the abdomen to get connected to the spine again, which is extremely healthy for the spine but also allow the organic body, your internal organs to recede. They, they find their natural place, which is further back in the body. So they're not coming forward. I let the top of your chest spread. So the breastbone is lifting, the collarbones are broadening. Move your outer shoulders back. There's nothing under the outer shoulders. So just let them release and tuck the shoulder blades evenly into your back and flow the back upper neck muscles down away from the occipital bone, which is that little ridge of a bone on your skull, on the back of your skull. Make sure the back of your neck is elongated and the sides of your neck are relaxing. Release your lower jaw away from your upper jaw let your eyes quell, soften, release back. Find again that space inside your ears. And even allow your front brain to start to recede towards the back brain. In many ways, restorative poses are the most advanced poses. And then become aware of your breath. Notice your breath, observe your breath where it goes today. Observe the sensations of your body breathing. And then once again, bring your arms up alongside your ears and extend, extend your arms all the way up to maximize the length. Make sure your hands don't get closer together. Keep your hands as wide as your shoulders. Keep rolling your outer armpits upwards towards the ceiling, moving your thumbs down towards the floor and away from each other. And now inhale, and as you exhale, hold your elbows. So now your arms are framing your head like a picture frame. Yeah, that's it. And keep pulling the elbows backwards to open the armpits. Elongate the armpits, both vertically and horizontally. If this feels uncomfortable for your shoulder joint, this come back to that first position or work with your arms extended. Find a position that you can work with that you don't feel stress. Keep moving that forearms down and lifting the shoulder blades up into the back. And then once again, extend your arms again, straighten your arms, lengthen the sides of your body all the way to your arms, inhale. And then as you exhale, switch the cross of your forearms and hold your elbows again and keep pulling the elbows backwards, pulling the forearms downwards without allowing your head to get thrown back. Keep releasing the legs outwards, 
softening the abdomen backwards, lengthening the sides of the trunk upwards, flowing the back of the neck muscles downwards. Drawing your senses of perception inwards and observing the sensations of your body breathing. Take a vacation from other thought streams. Even if your mind starts to get pulled to those thought streams, like getting onto a train, just come back to the sensations of the body breathing. And then one more time, extend your leg, excuse me, extend your arms, extend your arms and lengthen the sides of your body, that's it. And then inhale, keep that length and then exhale, bring your arms back alongside your body and just feel the effects of those arm and shoulder movements. Maybe there's some more vibration in your chest, some more vitality. When you work with the arms, when you work with the shoulders, you're working with your heart and your lungs. So they're very important. Now to come out of this pose, you press your hands down and you keep your head back and you lead with your chest to come up out of the pose. Lead with your chest rather than your neck or your head. That's the way. And then take the belt off of your feet and off of your body and stretch out your legs and push the fronts of your thighs into the backs of your thighs. And just sit with your legs extended. If you need to sit up on your bolster, if your lower back falls backwards, go ahead and do that. But just take a few breaths in and out. Just let yourself bask in the results, in the effects of that wonderful pose. That's a great pose to do on a regular basis. That can be your whole practice. Maybe that's your home practice, and that's great. Okay, now lie down on your back again, but this time have the bolster on the right-hand side of your body because we're gonna do Supta Padangustasana. So have the bolster on the right-hand side of your body. You can still have a blanket for your head as needed. Make sure that if you're using a bolster, you don't have to use a bolster. You can use a foam block or blankets outside your right hip. If you're using a bolster, just make sure that the top of the bolster is below your armpits, below your right armpit. And of course, you can still have a blanket for your head. And then once you have that, go ahead and place your, you can make them either uh, take the loop out of your belt or you can just make the loop really big. Either one will work just fine. It's really up to you. And then you put the belt on the bottom of your right foot and you take the right leg upwards for Supta Padangustasana, number one. And this pose has many stages. So we're to the first stage is learning where 90 degrees is. Where the heck is that? So that your right leg is perpendicular to the floor. So in other words, you're not pulling the leg inwards towards your chest. Now, the exception is if you have tighter hamstrings, any lower back sensitivity, you can slant the right leg a little bit away from your chest to get your leg fully extended because that's the priority, an extended leg. And then the brain of this pose is not the up leg, believe it or not, that's where the sensation goes, but the brain of the pose is the down leg. So can you reach your left, press your left thigh down and extend your inner left leg along the floor to your inner left heel and reach through the left big toe mound as if there was another belt on your left foot, right? Visualize there's another belt, belt on your left foot, that's it. So you hold the belt so your hands are apart and make sure that your outer right foot is in alignment with your outer right hip. And as you extend through that inner left leg, even move your tailbone down towards the floor and extend your right inner leg all the way up to that right inner foot. So push up into the belt with your right big toe mount. Extend up to the ceiling with your right inner heel. 
Lift your inner arms upwards towards your ears. Draw your outer shoulders back to the floor. Bring your back upper neck muscles down. Lift your chest. This is stage one. Now stage two, bend your elbows out to the sides and start to pull your right foot either up to 90, if you're working towards 90. In other words, pull it any amount closer towards your head and your chest. That's it. But as you do that, make sure that your left leg doesn't lift. Keep the left leg down. Keep the tailbone moving down towards the floor. It's kind of counterintuitive. And keep your right thigh pressing back away from your right abdomen. So don't just let the right thigh drop into the right abdomen. That's it. And draw your abdomen back towards your spine again. The back of the abdomen comes towards the spine. Very good. And now uh, release. And let's do that on the other side. You can keep the bolster there. We haven't taken the leg out to the side. So just belt your left foot. Place it around your left big toe mount. Your left little toe mount. And then extend your right leg out and focus on that right leg. That's the brain of the pose. So press the front of the right thigh into the back of the right thigh. And extend that inner right leg to the inner right heel to the right big toe mount. Take the tailbone down and then maintain that intelligence, that awareness of your down leg as you start to lengthen the inner left thigh all the way up to that, in, that left big toe mound, push it up into the belt. We're just at 90 degrees now, so make sure that you're not pulling the leg in. There you go. And then reach up through the left inner heel. The reason for that 90 degrees, it gives you, it's kind of like Tadasana. You don't have as much sensation, but you have more ability to become aware. So now, once you have that, now start to go to stage two. Bend your elbows out to the sides and then start to pull your left foot in any amount towards your face and your chest. Ah, but don't let your right leg come up. Remember, that's the brain of the pose. Don't let your left leg bend and don't let your left leg ever so subtly drift to the right. It wants to, doesn't it? Keep extending the inner legs away from each other like the, the cutting edge of the scissors, right? the inner edges of scissors, that's the way. Keep your outer shoulders down, keep your chest lifting, the back of the neck extending. Super good. Okay, now release that and we'll go back to the first leg. So belt your right foot and we'll do those first two stages once again, and then we'll come and the leg will go out to the side. So hold the belt so your hands are apart, focus on your down leg, which is the left leg, press it down. Maybe it's even further down. Get rid of any space under the left thigh. And you do that by moving the tailbone to the floor. If your tailbone is coming up away from the floor, that means your sacrum is, is lifting. That's not so healthy for the sacrum. Tailbone down, that's it. And then bend your elbows and start to pull your right foot closer, but keep moving your right thigh away and you can, Walk your hands higher up the belt or you can keep your elbows on the floor. It's really a personal preference, that's it. But make sure that your head isn't rolling back. Yes, yeah, scissor the legs, the inner edges of the legs. Nice, Miriam. Now hold on to the belt with your right hand. That's it. And bring your right leg out to the side until you feel that support of that bolster right outside the hip. And of course you can bring your right elbow down to the floor in line with your right shoulder. So that's the reason not to have the bolster too high. And make sure that your right foot is in a straight line with your outer right hip. So don't let your right foot start to slant down away from your head and your chest. Keep it just in a straight line outside your right hip. And then again, press down with your left thigh, but be more specific of pressing the outer left thigh down. Keep your left back waist down and keep reaching that left arm to the left. And then push into the belt with your right inner foot and extend that right inner leg. Similar to having the blocks outside the legs in Supta Baddha Konasana, allow your leg to be supported. Allow that outer right leg to be supported. And then notice how your right abdomen is lower than your left abdomen. Can you bring the right abdomen to the left? So it's like bringing your right abdomen out of hiding. Yes. Keep allowing the back of the abdomen to move towards the spine. 
Keep allowing the organs to move back. Relax your jaw and your tongue. Keep both sides of your trunk even. Super good. Okay, now release that. And now move your prop to the other side and we'll do those three poses or that, that first pose, first two stages, and then the second pose on the left hand side. So belt your left foot, make sure you have room. If you need to turn your body around, if you're dealing with limited space, go ahead and do that. Make sure the back of the neck is elongated. And then focus on your down leg. So whatever is touching the floor is your first focus in all of the asanas. That's you build your asanas from the ground up. That goes for all of the asanas. So when you're in headstand, you build it from the forearms all the way up to your feet. In this pose, you start with your down leg, the right leg, press it down. Yes, move the tailbone down. Move your left thigh away. So just come to vertical. Good, now go to the second stage. Bend your elbows and start to pull your left foot. But notice I don't say the left thigh, the left foot. I mean, the left thigh will come forward, but you're still resisting it backwards. So that's it, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Keep broadening your collarbones, bring your outer shoulders back. Don't let your head fall back. Keep moving that left thigh away from the left abdomen. Draw the abdomen back. And now hold onto the belt with your left hand both sides of the belt, inhale, bring your right arm out to the side and take that left leg out to the left and bring your left elbow down in line with your left shoulder. Make sure that your left foot is in a straight line with your outer left hip or maybe even a little bit higher up towards your um, shoulders. But make sure that your pelvis isn't tipping. I think you need to bring that bolster closer to your hip Tamar, because it looks like your right hip is falling to the left. So bring the bolster even closer in, that's it. And as you bring your attention to the down leg, which is the right leg, move the outer right thigh down, move your back right waist down, keep your right arm going to the right. Yes, stretch it and push into the belt with your left foot. So you should feel like your body is spreading uh, horizontally out to the sides and allow the left thigh to be supported by that bolster and then notice how your left abdomen is kind of in a hiding place. Can you, as you draw your outer left knee back into the outer left hip, can you move your abdomen from the left side to the right side so that that left abdomen comes out of hiding? Yes, and your organs move towards the back of your body. Stay even on both sides of the trunk. That's the way, and now come back to the center and release. Very good. Just stretch out your legs. You can bring your legs uh, hip distance apart or all the way together. I'll leave that to you. Lift up your arms over your head and have your palms upwards. Have your hands shoulder cap distance apart. So reach your heels away from your fingernails. Palms are upwards. Pull your legs away from your arms. Lengthen the sides of the abdomen and make sure that both sides of your back waist are still down. That's it. And then move your back ribs down and pull the sides of your trunk up to your arms and then your arms up beyond your fingers. Good. That's it. And now draw your um, arms back alongside your body. Come to the, uh, roll to the side and come and watch. Okay, so now some of you can try that without support. So the first time we do it is with support, okay? Now, of course, classically the pose is done without support. So, some of you can try it without support. And I want you, to, and also you can try to keep your elbow upwards. So bringing the elbow down, you know, gives you more stability. But just watch what I do. Hopefully you can see, get close to your device, because I don't know how big the demonstration will be. Okay, so I come up. So of course, this is the first stage and then I go to the second stage, right? And now I don't have any support here, unless you're gonna use the support. I'm trusting you to have the intelligence right for you. And then I hold the foot. Notice I hold it close. You know, eventually you hold on to the big toe 
So I'm not asking you to do that today, but I am asking you to hold closer. And then when I bring this leg out to the side, I have to make sure not to just tip over. So how do I do that? It comes from here. I have to draw this outer knee in. So this is really firm. This gets really firm so that this stays level. This doesn't lift up. As I draw this in, not only does the pelvis stay level, but as I draw that outer right hip in, I can move my abdomen more. As I draw that hip in, I can move this abdomen back to this side. Okay, so that's the pose. And then we're also gonna take the leg across. And when you take the leg across, this hip starts to come up. So you have to roll this hip down, roll this outer left thigh down, and you bring the leg across. The first stage, the back waist is down. The second stage, the back waist starts to come up. But notice my left foot, this bottom foot is still up. Okay, the toes are still up. So get ready. So please feel free to use support. Again, if you, if you know that's better for your body, Leela, I would re recommend it. If you're dealing with any hip issues, use the support. That's it, always be, have a sense of humility. And go to stage one of Supta Padangustasana. So be real clear about the stages. If you were to take a pop quiz after this class, you should be able to pass the pop quiz. Iyengar yoga is about building intelligence. So be in the pose, have your right leg up. Be in the pose, have your right leg up. That's it. Supta Padangustasana, first stage. Yes. The pop quiz would be the Sanskrit name of the poses and the stages of the poses. There's not going to be a pop quiz, don't worry. <laughs> Just in case you get test anxiety. But that's the idea. You're here to learn. We're here. We come to class to learn, and then you do that on your own. That's the idea of Iyengar Yoga. It's not to, you know, always come to the class to do it. You come to the class to learn, and then you do it on your own. That's eventually what you're going for. You may not be there yet, but that's eventually what you're going for. So just come to that first stage. Focus again on the down leg, the left leg. The left leg is down. The tailbone is down. That's it. The right thigh is moving away from the abdomen. Make sure that your right leg isn't drifting. Now stage two, pull the right leg in. That's it. Pull the right foot in. Yes, keep the left thigh down, tailbone down. There you go. Now hold the belt with your right hand. Hold it. Close to the foot. Now, close, no, your arm stays straight. Your arm stays straight unless you're making a conscious choice to bring your elbow down. Otherwise, your arm stays straight. It's as if you're holding the foot. That's it. And bring your right leg out to the side with or without your support. Yes, but don't tip over. If you're tipping over and you cannot not tip over, the first thing is to bring your elbow down. If that still is not enough support, take care of yourself and add some support outside the hip. You might take a few more weeks before you can do it without the support. Good, now press your outer left thigh down, keep your left waist down, keep reaching that left arm to the side. Make sure that your right foot is in a straight line with your right hip and then draw back from your outer right knee into your right buttocks. There's a sucking outer right knee into the right buttocks. That's it. Move your abdomen to the left and move your left, keep your left hip down and keep reaching that right leg to infinity. Nice, you guys. Come back to the center. Hold the belt now with your left hand and then bring that right leg across. No, not that much, Miriam, much less. At first, keep your back right waist on the floor. Your back right waist will be on the floor. So you just take your right leg over without letting your right waist come up. That's stage one, that's it. Keep your left toes upwards. Keep your left inner thigh down. Make sure that your right foot is up in alignment with your right hip. And then start to do the action of moving your outer right hip away from your right shoulder and your outer right thigh away from your right chest. Okay, now go a little bit further over. You do come further over, yes. And you can let your right waist come up but you're still working to bring it down. So the abdomen is moving from the left side to the right side. So make sure that your left toes don't, they're still up. Your left toes are still up. Your left inner thigh is still down. Some of you can pull the right foot further up towards your left shoulder. Pull it up and move your right hip down away from your right shoulder, outer right thigh away. Abdomen strongly 
to the right. Reach your right arm out. Make sure that your right shoulder is not up. If it's up, you've gone too far. Very good. And then come back to the center. Nice, you guys. And now stretch out that leg. Feel the difference. Those poses. BKS Iyengar says that 70% of our challenges can be tremendously helped by these poses. Okay, so 70% um, of our um, challenges in our hips and our legs. So come up and let's do the other side. So left leg up. If you're gonna use your support, of course, put your support on the left side. Otherwise, get ready for that left side. Stage one, 90, 90 degrees. Press your right leg down. Move your tailbone down. Keep hitting your left thigh away from your left abdomen. Lift your chest, outer shoulders down. Now stage two, pull the left foot closer. Yes, yes, without letting your head go back. Maybe you can walk your hands higher. Maybe you're getting closer now. This is the third time we've done it, right? So maybe there's some change. There's some parinama transformation. Very good. Now hold the belt with your left hand close to the foot, unless you're consciously choosing to bring the elbow down. That's fine. Otherwise, classically, the hand comes close to the foot and then reach the right arm out to the side. Inhale and take the left leg out to the left. Now, if you are losing your alignment, the first thing to do is just bring the elbow down. Give yourself that support. If it's still not coming, if your hip is still falling to the left, then look, take care of yourself by putting some support outside that, that hip. It looks like you're tipping a little bit tomorrow. So be real mindful not to bring your left leg so far out to the side. So control it. So make sure that your left foot is in alignment with your left hip. Keep your outer right thigh down. Keep your right waist down. Push into that belt with your left inner foot, elongate that inner left thigh. But now can you draw back? Can you suck back, pull back from the outer left knee into the left buttocks and then bring your left abdomen out of hiding. Move your left abdomen to the right. Marion, can you bring your, the outer edge of your left foot parallel to the floor? Outer edge of your left foot, the one that's out, parallel to the floor. See how your heel is higher? Look at your left foot, Marion. Don't let your heel be higher than your toes. Move your tailbone towards the floor. That's better. More like that, more like that. Tailbone to the floor. Good. That's the way. Okay, now come back to the center, everybody. Hold the belt with your uh, right hand. Make sure that your left foot is up in alignment with your left hip. Sometimes it drops down, right? Keep your inner right knee moving down, your inner right thigh moving down, your inner right leg extending. And then inhale, keeping your left back waist down, bring your left leg over to the right, just a little bit. That's it. Now inhale, lift your chest. As you exhale, move your left hip down, away from your left shoulder. Move your outer left thigh down. Yes. Good. And now you can come a little bit further over. Your right waist will come up. Your, excuse me, your left waist will come up a little bit, but still your, your right toes are upwards and you're still fighting to get that left waist down. The right abdomen moves to the left. And then some of you can pull the left foot a little bit further up towards your right shoulder. And you can move your left hip down away from your left shoulder. Yes, keep moving the abdomen back to the left. Very good. And then come back to the center and release. Super good. Now, once again, bring your legs together or apart. Apart is more forgiving. Lift your arms up over your head with your palms upwards, but this time lock your thumbs above you. Pull on your thumbs and squeeze your arms, squeeze your arms, your upper arms in towards your ears. That's it. And extend your heels away from your fingernails. Press the thighs down. Attach your buttocks to your heels. Attach the back of the abdomen to the spine. Lift the sides of your trunk up to your arms. Relax the back upper neck muscles. Now switch the cross of your uh, thumbs. Inhale, and then as you exhale, bring both of your knees into the chest and wrap your arms around both legs. Pavamuktasana. So yeah, if you have any knee sensitivity, put your hands on the back of the knees. And then soften your thighs into your abdomen. Draw the abdomen away from the thighs towards the spine and move your tailbone to the floor. 
So keep moving, spreading the sacrum into the floor. If there's any tightness in the groins, have some space in between the knees. Give yourself some space there. Relax your shoulders. That's it. Good. Okay, now bring your feet down and then come and watch again. I'm going to ask you to put your bolster or some blankets under your hips. Okay, so just starting on my back again. I'm using a bolster, but you can use a blanket. Blankets, whatever you have. And the bolster, the top edge of the bolster just comes right at the top of the buttock. So it's not in my back, not at all. It's at the top of my buttocks. Okay, and then once I have this position, okay, some of you might need a belt, but you take your legs up into Urdhva, Prasarita, Padasana. So this bolster is lengthening my buttocks flesh so that my abdomen is moving down. Now, if you have a lot of tightness and your legs are shaking or slanting, I want you to put a belt and hold, uh, hold your legs up with a belt. Otherwise, you hold the, mat, the hold the sides of the bolster or the sticky mat. You hold the outer edges of the sticky mat or the sides of the bolster. So this is the beginning of Urdhva Prasarita Padasana, upward and 10 feet. So let's do that. Get ready. Lie down on your back with your knees bent and then put that bolster under your hips so that the top of the bolster or the edge of the blankets is right at the top of the buttocks. The, uh, the blocks don't really work for this. So try to have a bolster or something, or blankets, that's it. And then extend your legs up. And then what I'm seeing is that some of you are slanting your legs inwards. Can you find again, vertical? Remember how I was asking you to find vertical with one leg up? Can you find vertical here? So your legs should be right above your hips. They shouldn't be slanted um, inwards towards your chest, right above your hips. And then if your legs are shaking or slanting away from your chest, then put a belt and hold on to a belt. Otherwise, bring your hands and hold on to the outer edges of the bolster or hold on to the sticky mat. That's the way, good. Now, as you extend your legs upwards, as if you had a belt, reach up through the big toe mounds, reach up through the inner heels, bring that intelligence to your feet. These are the feet when you are in shoulder stand or when you're in headstand. You want these same feet. That's it. The ball of the foot is a tiny bit higher than the heel, but it's not like you're just pointing the foot like a ballet dancer. It's different. Grip your knees and keep lengthening from your hips to your feet and then lengthen from your hips to your shoulders. Keep your outer shoulders down. Make sure that your head isn't being thrown back. If it is, put a blanket. Good. Now bring your knees into the chest and wrap your arms around the legs and notice how your legs just cast count, cascade. Bend your knees and wrap your arms around the legs. That's it. And your legs just cascade down. It feels kind of nice, doesn't it? And the abdomen really moves down. Okay, now some of you will do that again. Others of you, once you have your legs up, lift your arms up over your head, have your palms upwards. Yes, over your head, alongside your ears. That's it. So you can either make room there, Marion, or just hold on to the uh, sides of the bolster again. Either way, that's it, good. So make sure that your legs aren't slanting inwards. Find that sense of vertical. Your legs are perpendicular to the floor, straight up, like a straight arrow, like a flagpole, perpendicular to the floor, that's it. And draw your abdomen down, and then extend up through your big toe mounds, extend up through your inner heels, Lengthen the sides of your trunk to your arms. That's the way. Good. And then bring your arms back alongside your body and draw the knees into the chest. So remember, yeah, I don't know if anyone here needs a belt, but if you do, you're just using a belt around your feet. Okay, and then once again, lift your legs up. Lift your legs up, lift your arms up. Good, now lock your thumbs above you. Lock your thumbs like we did a moment ago and pull your thumbs apart so that your outer arms press in, your outer armpits roll up. Good, and then see if you can lower your legs down from 90 down to 60 degrees. And then lower your legs down to 
30 degrees. And then lower your legs down to 10 degrees. And then lower your legs down to where you're hovering from the floor. Good. Okay, now bend your knees into the chest. That's it, good. And then come and watch. Okay, so what happens in the pose, and what I forgot to mention is that feel free to do the pose when you're lowering the legs. You can still do the pose here, holding the bolster or holding the sides of the sticky mat. So once I start to lower the legs down, what happens is my back starts to arch, my, my abdomen starts to go to the ceiling. See that? I don't want that. I want to keep my abdomen moving down towards the floor. So this is all going down as I lower down, as I keep that. And you want to go to that interesting place where your body is like a plank, but without doing this. See that? It's losing it. I have to keep this in. Okay, so let's try it again. Remember, you have the option of holding here if holding here is too much for you. So please use this option if lifting your arms up is just too much and you can't do the pose with integrity. It's better to find a way to do the pose with integrity than just to do the pose without integrity. Okay, so get ready. Lift your legs up, have your bolster in that place so it feels like it's lengthening the buttocks flesh. And then either lift up your arms and lock your thumbs the less habitual way or hold on to the sides of the bolster. Relax your eyes, relax your jaw. We tend to like grimace, right? And grip in this pose in our face. It won't help. It won't help to tighten your jaw. <laughs> it won't help at all. So lower your legs down from 90 down to 60. Abdomen back, abdomen back to the spine and then down to 30. Abdomen back, pull your arms away from your feet and then down to 10 and then down to where you're hovering. Find that interesting place, connect the back of the abdomen to the spine, get longer, beautiful. Now draw the knees into the chest, beautiful. And then stretch your legs up, very good. Let's, and then you can do it a few more times on your own like that. So you can lock your thumbs or hold on to the sides of the uh, bolster and then go down through the stages, 60. 30, 10, hover, abdomen back, arms away from feet. And then once you're down, draw your knees into the chest. That's it, very good. And then draw your knees into the chest, rest there. Good, now we'll do it one more time. Some of you can try it without the bolster, without the bolster. So if you wanna try it without the bolster, take away the bolster, that's harder. Okay, so this is the last one. You have the option of doing it with or without the bolster. Okay, get ready, lift your legs up. Choose your hand position. If you have a belt, I recommend just staying with the bolster. And, just, and if you have a belt, one thing I also forgot to mention is with a belt, you don't lower the legs. If you're still using a belt around your feet, you just work on the static position of keeping your legs straight up. You only start to lower your legs once you're free of the belt. So get ready once you have your hand position and then lower the legs down through those stages, 90, 60, 30, 10, hovering, abdomen back. You should feel like your abdomen is down on the floor, your back waist, and then draw your knees into the chest. Excellent, and now wrap your arms around. Beautiful, well done. Okay, now put that bolster back under your hips in the same way. Good. Keep your feet down, keep your feet down, and then just shift your hips a little bit towards the uh, right side of the bolster. Shift your hips to the right side of the bolster. So ask yourself, am I going to the right or to the left? Shift your hips to the right side of the bolster. That's it. Good. And then bring your arms out to the sides in line with your shoulders like an airplane. Make sure that your arms are not higher or lower than your shoulders. Good. Now, keep your hips to the right of the bolster, but bring your knees up towards your chest and over towards your left elbow. Bring your knees up and over towards your left elbow. Yes, your knees are hovering. Knees are hovering above the floor. Yes, lift your lower knee into your upper knee. 
Draw your knees up towards your left elbow. Press your arms down. Draw your toes up to the knees. Draw your abdomen back and turn your abdomen from the left side to the right side. Left side to the right side. Turn it. Yes. Your, your knees are to the left. No, knees are to the left. You're turning the abdomen. That's the name of the pose. Turn your stomach. Don't turn your head and make sure that your right shoulder is all the way down. Very good. Come back to the center. Press your feet down and shift your hips to the left side of the bolster. Shift your hips to the left. Make sure that your arms are in a straight line with your shoulders and then bring your knees up. Bring your knees up and over. Lift your toes up to your knees, Marion. Flex your feet. Flex. That's the way, like that. Very good. Lift your lower knee into your upper knee and then lift your knees up towards your right elbow. Your palms are upwards. Yes, knees are together. Feet are together. Feet are together. That's it. Good. Now lift your chest. Draw your abdomen back to the spine and turn your abdomen from the right side to the left side. That's it. Press your arms down, lift your chest. Don't turn your head. Very good. And now release. Excellent. Now bring your feet down. Now take away that bolster. And now we're gonna bring the knees all the way to the floor. Okay, so bring your arms out to the sides in line with your shoulders. Shift your hips to the right side of your mat. And then bring your knees all the way up and over and all the way to the floor. Bring your knees to the floor, all the way to the floor, all the way to the floor. So we're doing the passive version. Knees to the floor, feet to the floor. Knees to the floor, feet to the floor. Knees to the floor, feet to the floor. Bring your knees up towards your left elbow. Bring your knees up, bring your knees up, bring your knees up. That's it, draw your toes up to the knees. Yes. Do you remember how we would, do a cannonball into a pool. Do you remember any of you that? If you ever had a pool, then you, you, like we did a cannonball, curled ourselves into a ball. That's the way you want to feel. Draw your abdomen back, lift your chest. Now press your um, left arm down and turn your abdomen from the left side to the right side. And then reach through that right arm, reach through the right arm. Now, if your knees are apart, you need to put something in between the knees. If your right shoulder is way up, you have to put something under your bottom knee. If your right shoulder is way up off of the floor. That's it. Now, just for a moment, put your left hand on your top knee, press it down and turn more. Turn your abdomen, turn your ribs. Very good. Now let's go to the other side. So come back to the center, press your feet down and shift your hips to the left. Hips to the left. Yes, bring your knees up and over to the right. Bring your knees up and over towards your right elbow, all the way up towards that right elbow and then down to the floor. Bring your knees to the floor, bring your feet to the floor. Draw your toes up to the knees, knees up to the shoulders or to the arms, elbows. Make sure your arms are shoulder height. Now ask yourself, is my left shoulder lifting? If it is, you have to put something under your bottom right knee. Are your knees coming apart? If they are, you have to put something in between the knees. Now lift your chest. Your chest should not be turning. Your chest is square to the ceiling. It's your abdomen that's turning. So turn, draw your abdomen back to the spine and then turn your abdomen from the right side to the left side. Press your right arm down to get more turn and reach your left arm away. Now put your right hand on your top knee and hold them down. Draw your abdomen back, make your abdomen thin. As you turn, turn your stomach. Jatara is the stomach. Turn the stomach. Parivartanasana is revolving. Very good. And now release. Very good. We'll do the first side and we're going to hover. So come and watch. So I have my arms out to the side. It's a good way to work. We often instruct it. I'm not going to ask you to do it, but it's just to have your arms in line with the, the long edge of your mat. You can even hold on to the mat. It gives you like a reference. I'm not gonna ask you to do that, but watch. So you shift your hips in one direction and then you bring your knees up and over. But now we're hovering, we're hovering, right? The knees are coming up, the toes are coming up and I'm turning my abdomen this way. And then watch what I do with this arm. I stretch the sticky mat this way, or I press it down, but the palm is up. With this arm, I stretch it this way because I'm reaching this arm away from the shoulder. 
and I'm turning my abdomen, turning, turning, turning. And then we'll come back and then we'll do the other side. Okay, so get ready. Jitara Parivartanasana. Now, if that looks like it's gonna to be too much for you, you have two choices. Do it again with the bolster. Do it again with the bolster, that's easier, with the bolster, or do the, do the passive version of bringing your legs all the way to the floor. So I'm counting on you to do the version that's best for you today. So press your feet down, shift your hips to the right. Shift your hips to the right. Bring your knees all the way up towards your left elbow, all the way up and hover them unless you're doing the passive version or have a bolster under your hips. Very good. Draw your toes up to the knees. That's it. Now, with your right arm, press your right arm down into the floor and draw your abdomen back and turn your abdomen from the right to the left. Yes, that's it. And now press your, um, reach out through that left arm, reach it outwards. I think you're doing the other side tomorrow, but it's fine. Just reverse the directions, no worries. Good, draw those knees higher up. Good, come back to the center and we'll do the other side. So shift your hips now to the left side or just do the other side you didn't do. And then bring your knees all the way up towards the right elbow. Bring your knees all the way up towards the right elbow. You might be, yeah, you might do it right, that's fine. Yeah, that's it, all the way up towards that elbow, good. Now draw your knees up, draw your toes up. Maybe you're doing the passive version with your uh, knees on the floor. Maybe you're doing the version with a bolster under you. Now press your right arm down, press it down. Draw your abdomen back and turn your stomach from the right side to the left side and reach that left arm out. Your left shoulder should be all the way down, all the way on the floor, that left shoulder. Very good. And then come back to the center. Very good. Now just bring your feet together and let your knees go out to the sides. Baddha Konasana, that's it, without support. Yes, Baddha Konasana without support. You got it. And stretch up your arms alongside your ears. Make sure that your buttocks flesh is lengthening. Press your feet into each other. Let your inner groins release. Sometimes when we do those kinds of poses, we harden the groins. Good, lengthen the sides of your trunk to your arms. Good, now bring your arms back alongside your body and cross your legs like we do at the very beginning of class. Cross your shin bones and let your knees go out to the sides. No, your legs are flat on the floor. You're just crossing your shin bones. That's it, yes. Cross the shin bones and then lengthen the inner thighs towards the knees. Make your feet soft, meaning that the bottoms of the feet turn upwards. And, keep, and then re-extend your arms over your head. Don't let your back arch. Remember, the abdomen still comes down. Uh, that's it. Connect that and reach the inner groins away from the pelvis. Relax the jaw. Relax the tongue. Palms are upwards. Now bring your arms back. Switch the cross of your legs. This is called Supta Svastikasana. That's it. It's the very beginning of a pose called Matsyasana, the fish. So cross your shins, let your um, thighs release onto your feet or your knees release onto your feet, make your feet soft, lift your arms up without throwing your abdomen up to the ceiling. Don't let your abdomen puff to the ceiling. Keep it back and lengthen the sides of your trunk. That's it, relax your jaw, relax your tongue, relax your throat. Super good. Okay, now bring your arms back alongside your body and release your legs. You can stretch them out, roll to your side, and then let's come into a downward facing dog pose with your hands at the wall. So have your inner thumbs and your inner index fingers against the wall. Push your inner thumbs and your inner index fingers against the wall and take downward facing dog pose. Feel free to have your feet as wide as the sticky mat for this first uh, downward facing dog pose. Push into the wall with your inner thumbs, your inner index fingers, straighten your arms. Pull the sides of your trunk away from your arms, outer armpits down, move your, press down through the ball mounds of your feet and then lift your inner legs up 
Take your inner legs back, your inner thighs back, take your outer hips back, and then reach your heels back and down. Heels back and down. That's the way. Make sure that your heels are a little bit wider than your toes. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now, what's happening with your abdomen? Is it just dropping to the floor? Can you move the thighs back, just like we were doing in Supta Padan Bhustasana? I asked you to move the thighs back away from the abdomen. As you do that, can you feel how the abdomen naturally draws up, doesn't it? It goes up and the waistline becomes thinner. But it's not like you're just sucking your gut in. It's, it's much more subtle, much more refined than just sucking the gut in. Good. Now, slowly come down onto the knees. I'm going to show you how to do that pose with head support. So it's a more advanced version of the pose. Okay, so come and watch. And you have a bolster or a block. I can show it both. I know that some of you have a bolster, some of you don't. So I have my bolster right against the wall and I'm bringing my hands that same position. So watch, even if you're familiar, and then watch. I take my legs up. You can still have your feet apart, hip distance. So the first action is just getting all of this to lift this. This has to go up. This has to go back. This has to go back. This goes in. And then my head just comes lightly down. It just rests. My head is resting. The work is in my arms, the work is in my legs, and my head is resting. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a block. And the block starts right under your breastbone. And when you come up and you go back and you go back and you go back, you just rest your head on that block. Downward dog with head support. Let's do it. Leela, I think you're doing the version with the chair, so any of those versions with the chair are fine because they're all supported. So these are fine for you. Okay, so press your hands into the um, wall. Again, take your, uh, lift up your knees, take your feet at least, um, hip to, at least as wide as your hands, but maybe again as wide as the sticky mat. Start with your heels lifted. First get high. Don't be concerned with your head. That's the last thing. That's like the cherry on top. Your head is the last thing. Let's turn the tops of your arms out. Get longer, get longer, get longer, get longer. Move your heels back and down, and now bring your head down. Let your head rest. Yes, let the forehead rest. That's the way, but keep your body weight in your legs. If you feel like whatever you're using for your head is pushing your head upwards, you have to go lower. If you feel like you have to bend your arms to get your head down to the support, you have to go lower. You have to go higher, excuse me, with the support. Straighten your legs, straighten your arms. Move the thighs back until the abdomen draws up and in. Beautiful. Okay, now come down and rest in child's pose. Big toes touching, knees apart. If child's pose is no good for you, take Pava Muktasa. Big toes touching, knees apart. Remember child's pose is a sitting posture. So sit your hips all the way back onto the feet. If your hips don't come to the feet, put something between the hips and the feet. So this is Pava Muktasana. You can have your hands on a box or a bolster. If, if child's pose is not a good pose for you, this is the replacement pose, or one of the replacement poses, okay? So move your hips back. Again, the knees are wider than the hips. Draw the thighs back, draw the abdomen back. Move the buttocks flesh back, but then lengthen the sides of your trunk forward. Sides of the trunk forward. Excellent. Now walk your hands back and come up and we'll do Prasarita Padottanasana. Okay, so Prasarita Padottanasana. I'm going to give you a couple of options. Okay, so just come and watch. So I have my heels lined up with the edge of my mat. The feet are slightly turned in. My feet are all the way out under my hands. I lift upwards and I come forwards into my pose and I lift my chest upwards. And then the easier way to do it is to walk your hands forward without letting your hips come forward. So the hips stay right where they are. And again, you just rest your head on that support. 
Otherwise, you walk your hands back and you rest your head down on the floor. Or you can have a blanket there or a block under your head. So one of those two versions we're gonna do. Okay, so get ready. Take your feet to the edge of your mat and then take your legs wide apart. Bring, lift up your arms, make sure that your feet are all the way out under your hands. Take your heels a little bit wider than your toes. Bring your hands to the hips, press your heels down, pull your legs up, roll your shoulders back, look upwards and then bend forwards. Bring your hands down to the floor, under your shoulders. You can have palms flat, you can be on fingertips or you can have blocks under your hands. Lift your chest, move your back ribs in and then make a conscious choice to either walk your hands forward and rest your head on something or walk your hands backwards and rest your head on the floor or something. That's it. So if your hands go backwards, your hands come in between your feet. Don't be too close to that wall, Marion, because you won't be able to do it. Come further from the wall. That's it. Yes, that's it. And bring your hands in between the feet with your fingernails going the same direction as the toenails. Good, Tamar. That's fine. And if your head is in between your, you know, is your head is going backwards, then your wrists and your elbows and your shoulders are all the same distance apart. Those of you with your arms forward, keep your hips right over the ankles. It's your upper body is similar to downward dog, right? So similar, just the legs are wide. Those of you with your hands backwards, lift your inner shoulders up so that your neck becomes longer. Rest your head down. Straighten your legs. This is the only, well, downward dog is also a standing pose. So this is the only, the second standing pose we're doing. We're gonna do one more, that's it. Okay, and now either walk your hands back or walk your hands forward. It depends on which pose you did. Lift your chest, shuffle your feet a little bit closer together for stability. Bring your hands to the hips, keep your legs straight, reach your chest forward, come up with confidence. Yes, nice, very good. Okay, now Uttanasana with head support. So Uttanasana with head support, I'm gonna give you a couple of options. One is to use a chair with maybe a bolster. So this is the easier version. So you could have your feet as wide as the sticky mat with the hips right over the ankles and then you just rest your head with a bolster. Maybe you don't need the bolster. Maybe you can just have a blanket there. This is fine. But some of you can go lower. You can have your head on a block, a couple of blocks. So now I bring my crown of my head all the way down onto those blocks. Okay, so you do one of those versions with your forearms on a chair or with your head down on blocks. If your blocks are really unstable, foam blocks, if they're kind of flimsy, it may not work as well. So use your own judgment. Okay, that's it. But you have to get the crown of your head down, Marion. The crown of your head, not your forehead. The crown of your head. Yes. Back towards that ponytail. Move the blocks lower, Miriam. You can go lower. Just bring your feet closer together, hip distance apart. Yeah, that's fine what you're doing, Tamar. That's it. Make sure that you're coming to the crown of the head. Crown of the head. Yes, that's it. Not, now you've got it, Marion. Now you've got it. That's it. Make sure that your hips are right over your ankles. Your heels are a little bit wider than the toes. Straighten your legs. Lift your kneecaps. Spread the backs of the thighs. Connect the abdomen to the spine so that you feel that support of your legs. Of course, it's a deep stretch of the legs, but your head is resting. Your consciousness is resting. That's it. The and it's more towards the crown of your head. These proposes prepare you for headstand, which of course we're not doing in this class, but they prepare you for that pose. Straighten your legs. Either rest your forearms or have your hands on fingertips, wider than your feet. Very good. Now, lift your chest, straighten your legs, bring your hands to the hips, reach the chest forward and up you come. Very good. Good morning once again. But now it's the afternoon, right? We made it to the afternoon. <laughs> okay, so now come back to the center. Whatever 
whatever you were using at the beginning of the class, get that together. Because we're going to do another version of Sukta Bhadukonasana. Okay, so get your bolster. And then have a couple of blankets. Notice how at first, for the first one, I put the bolster this way, didn't I? Now I'm asking you to put the bolster this way. We call that horizontal, we call this vertical. So this is a horizontal bolster. Again, you can use folded blankets this way or anything you have around. For this one, you could even use a block, a soft block at the lowest level if you don't have a bolster. But then you do want some blankets or pillows on the other side of the bolster so that there's a space between the bolster and whatever you're using for your head. Okay, so you can please get that set up. Make sure to have your belt handy as well. And then your two blocks or whatever you're using for your thighs, same thing. Okay, so once you have this, you put the belt on as we did before. You put it over your body, down to that low underwear line. You bring it through your legs, around your feet, and then you make the belt taut. Of course, you can do it without the belt. If the belt is too much trouble, then don't worry. What the belt does is it gives you a sense of traction. It brings your sacral band in so that your abdomen can relax more. Have your blocks handy outside your knees, lengthen your buttocks flesh, and then when you go back over this horizontal bolster, your shoulders come into the space, and then your head goes onto these blankets. You can always make a roll with the top blanket for the nape of your neck, and your arms go straight out to the side. Now, if you have a really thick bolster, you might need to put a folded blanket under your hips because it's just too much bend, right? So if that's the case, take care of yourself by putting another um, blanket under your hips. These blocks just come right outside the thighs at any level, medium or lower level. The arms go out to the sides. If your head feels really too far back, add some more height under your uh, head because it can fall back a little bit, but if it's dramatic, you know, put the roll under your neck or add some more height or both. Okay, so be in that pose and then make sure that your lower back is happy. Make sure that your neck is happy. Your arms are out to the sides like we did for those twisting poses. And then your palms are upwards. Your palms are up. And then the feet are together and then you're allowing your inner thighs to release out. That's the way. And you should feel like the, the top of the bolster or the blankets comes right up into your armpit so that the shoulders and the arms are in a, a gentle space, like a, an alleyway between the bolster uh, under your chest and the blankets or whatever's under your head. And then relax your jaw completely. Relax your eyes back. And again, allow the back of the abdomen to connect with the spine and allow your internal organs to soften back. So allow the uh, abdomen to become soft because we're also stretching it because we did some abdominal work today. So now we wanna lengthen the abdominal fascia, the interconnective tissue. So this pose, horizontal Supta Baddha Konasana, allows for a gentle lengthening of the abdominal fascia. Tuck your shoulder blades evenly into your back. Keep flowing your back upper neck muscles down. Re really let go your, your jaw. Let your cheekbones broaden away from the bridge of your nose. So it feels like your face is widening. Your face gets whiter and all of the skin on your face softens and becomes wrinkle-less. Just really releases. 
It's kind of like when you look up at yourself with a mirror in an elevator, you just look up and your face is smooth. It's the same idea. Let the front brain move into the back of the brain. Settle your head space into your heart space and become aware of the sensations of your body breathing. When you do that, you're automatically in the present moment. That's called mindfulness. Spread across the top of your collarbones. Let the back of the armpits come to the front of the armpits. Allow yourself to be quiet. Allow yourself to be still. Good. And now to come out of the pose, press your elbows into your bolster. Keep your head back, lead with your chest and come up out of the pose. And then if you have a belt on, take it off of your feet, off of your body and stretch out your legs and just observe the effects of that pose. Okay, and then put your bolster near to a wall this way. So I'm gonna show you the classic setup. The classic setup. See how I have these bricks here? So that just gives me the distance so that the bricks form a barrier, right? You don't have to do this, but that's the, so that that's the basic distance. And then if you can do it, have another blanket on top. So you get even higher up. Right? And then of course you could have another blanket for your head. And then to come into the pose, you put one hip onto the side and you bring your hips to the wall. Look how I bring my arm to the side of the mat. And then I come up and I'm right in my pose. And I wanna tuck my sitting bones into that space. Of course, you can add a blanket under your head. Your arms can be like this or they can be like this. So you find a good position for your arms for Vipriti Karani. Okay, get ready. Get your legs up for inversion. Have the sitting bones into that space between the wall and the bolster. Yeah, that's it. If your bolster is super thick, try it without the blanket. Maybe the blanket's too much, yeah. It depends on the height of your bolster. So if your bolster is super thick, you can lose the blanket, yeah. In India, the bolsters are really smashed. They're almost like pancakes. So they put a lot of blankets on top. So our bolsters are not so smashed usually. That's it. 
Try with the bolster, yeah, further out from the wall, yeah. And then I'll show you what you can do from there once you're up. Get your legs up. Get your hips up. <laughs> get your hips up onto that bolster. Sit on this. Get, get your hip to this. Get your get your right hip up on the bolster. Hip up on the bolster onto one side. Don't be in the middle. There you go. Good. Okay. Now go up. There you go. That's it, Marianne. Good for you. Fight for it. That's it, good, now come down. Okay, good, now stay there, now good. Move your body a little bit to the right, Marion. Okay, good, now. Lift your arms up and hold on to the side edges of your sticky mat. Grab hold of the edges, lift your arms up, bend your arms and hold on to the side edges of the sticky mat. No, the, above your head. Hold on to the sides of the sticky mat above your head with your arms bent. That's it. Now lift your hips upwards. Now pretend your shoulders are feet. Walk your shoulders in. Walk your shoulders in. Pretend your shoulders are feet and walk your shoulders like feet in and you'll get your hips closer. You're doing it. That's how you do it. Very good. Yeah. Your shoulders become feet. Beautiful. That's it. Nice. Now you're closer and then just let it go. Bring your legs together and then find a good position for your arms, make sure the back of the neck is elongated after you've come up onto the top of the shoulders. So in this pose, you're lengthening the heels upwards, let the sitting bones come down, let the hips rest. Bring your arms either, make sure they're bent either alongside your, um, like in, in the like goal post shape, or you're just bringing them straight alongside your body with your palms upwards. Back of the neck is long. That's the way, good for you. And again, let your abdomen connect to the spine and let your abdomen soften. So you think of your abdomen like a, a, um, a pool so there's the waterfall of your legs flowing into the pool of your abdomen. And then there's the waterfall of your side body and your chest into the pool of your throat. So make your throat region and your abdomen super soft and relaxed, your eyes soft and relaxed. Inverted legs pose, Inver uh, Vipriti Karani. Notice in this pose, the sensation of the body breathing. And now cross your legs on the wall, cross your shin bones on the wall. Yes, cross your shin bones, let your legs release into the wall. If you have tighter hamstrings, this might even feel better for you. abdomen soft. Now, if you have something under your head, like a blanket, take it away for a moment. Take that blanket away from under your head and then push into the wall with your feet and slide backwards until your hips come in front of the bolster so that your sacrum and your head are at the same level and then cross your legs the opposite way than you did on the wall on the bolster. Cross your legs the opposite way and just rest your arms at your sides and you can put that blanket back under your head if you'd like to, that's it. Turn your palms upwards. Now your arms are just at your sides. 
This is a variation of Shavasana. So have your palms upwards, shoulders back, lengthen the back of the neck. Let loose your legs, let loose your arms. Now bring your hands to your body. And after your next exhalation, take a deeper inhalation. And then follow that with a longer exhalation. Take a deeper inhalation. And then a longer exhalation. And then draw your knees into the chest, roll to your right side. And then come up to sit in any position that feels good to you. Just sit for a moment. Remembering, remember those of you who came to the meditation class, learning meditation, this is a great time to meditate after, after yoga practice for five minutes, for three minutes, whatever, just watching the breath. Otherwise, just sit for a few moments and absorb the effects of your practice. Bring your hands to your heart center. Lift your chest way, way upwards. Bow your head downwards and deeply acknowledge yourself for practicing yoga today. Namaste. Peace and blessings to everybody. Thank you so very much for coming and sharing practice with me today.